Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. Let's take a brief review of these mandibular premolars here, uh, giving some of our identifying characteristics more specifically and uh, some of our new terminology here. If we look to our mandibular first premolar, we identify it by the fact that it has one large cusp and one fairly small cusp, and it has two distinct pits. Now, this can be confused with a maxillary cuspid. If we were to look to a tooth, and we'll hold it in an anatomical position, this might look like a cuspid. Even if we were to look at it in this view, it may look like a cuspid. But when you turn over to the lingual surface and you find two distinct pits on it, then we know that we haven't got a cuspid. We've got a mandibular premolar. Sometimes these uh, lingual cusps will become very small. On the other hand, we could have a, a tooth in which it could look like a maxillary cuspid, except it's got a rather significant size lingual cusp. And sometimes these lingual cusps in the mandibular first premolars will get a little bit larger. But generally, again, we're relating back to our mesial lingual groove, rather strong groove. We don't have these in the uh, second premolars, mandibular. And we've got our transverse ridge, which is frequently rather strong. But let's go back and look at the more typical uh, terminology and, and review this. First, we've got a uh, crown that is lingually oriented. We've got our cusp over the center of the root structure. Our lingual cusp is small and located very close to the lingual. Our height of contour is not real close to the cervical on the buccal, but kind of in between the junction of the cervical third and middle third. And then we've got this long, flat two-thirds of our buccal surface here as we come up to the buccal cusp. On the lingual, our height of contour is in the middle of the tooth, but it is very close to the lingual cusp and actually in the occlusal third of our lingual surface. Notice the angle of our occlusal table. Actually, the whole angle of our occlusal table is about a 45 degree angle with the long axis of the tooth. And again, this is the only tooth in the mouth that has an occlusal table, which is at this type of an angle to the long axis of the tooth and the rut here. We've got a very strong, prominent transverse ridge that has the two triangular ridges connecting up on this tooth. In our outline form, let's look at her here. In our outline form, we've got this flattened mesial lingual line angle with this mesial lingual groove coming out. Otherwise, our tooth is fairly symmetrically round except for this one line angle. We've got our two pits, one of them being closer to the buccal cusp. Remember which one? It's our mesial pit because of our flattened line angle here is closer to the buccal cusp and our distal pit is generally a whole fossa is a little bit larger and it's not as close to the buccal cusp. But this is not a difficult tooth to identify and uh, these are the basic things that we look for on it. The two terms which are new here is our transverse ridge and our mesial lingual groove which are the two key new terms. Let's look to our Second here, we find basically that our occlusal table is not at a 45 degree angle. Our lingual cusps are much taller. And even though our crown does have this lingual type tilt to it here, so we can get the kind of angle to the crown, it does not uh, show that this uh, Lingual cusp is as small, and our occlusal table is not tipped as much as it was in our mandibular first. Our buccal cusp is not over the center of the root on our seconds, and our central groove is not really over the center of the root. If we took a central portion of the root, it would kind of come out right in the middle of our buccal triangular ridge. We're dividing this into about thirds. We've got about a third into our buccal cusp, a third into our central groove, and our lingual cusps are rather significantly located out on the lingual surface here. Height of contours, again, being very high on the lingual. And at the junction between our, I say high, it should be very close to the occlusal. I want to get rid of these highs and lows. Actually, between about the junction of our occlusal third and our middle third here. 
on the buckle we're at the junction of our cervical third and middle third, not real close to the cervical either. We've got our various forms on our occlusal. Let's take a, a peek at them. They're basically all symmetrical. Quite frequently we're involved with two cusps on the lingual, a mesial buccal and a, pardon me, a mesial lingual. We'll get it, and a distal lingual. If we don't have much of a distal lingual cusp, sometimes it may be just called a cusplet or tubercle. But in either instance, our main mass on the lingual surface, whether it be a single cusp or whether it be two cusp, is oriented to the mesial. So this identifies mesial rather easily for us. We've got the situation here where our terminology will vary a little bit according to our occlusal whether we've got this Y-shaped form, which we may have a central pit and a lingual groove, or in our H-shaped form, where we pick up more of our maxillary terminology with a central groove and a mesial and distal pits and fossas. And our U-shaped, which again would have a mesial and distal pit and a central groove with not a significant uh, lingual groove on it. This gives us basic differences between the two. Let's look at a, a group of teeth that we have here, and see if you can identify the teeth by their basic outline form here. Which of these teeth is, is more symmetrical now? Which has our flattened line angle? Where do we have our mesiolingual groove? I think you can see that we're a little bit more roundish or squarish, more symmetrical here, and on our first, we have a tendency we have a flattened angle and our groove coming out. Now if we go over and look at uh, another first, we find this groove is on the other side. This is a different side of the mouth. So we're catching our groove over here. And again, we're fairly symmetrical. Our top row here is basically seconds, and our first row here is basically first. If we move along on our group of teeth here, we can see rather strong differences in the pits one pit being much closer to our buccal cusp than the other. And again, you can see a very strong, prominent, flattened angles that will occur on these teeth. And our lingual grooves coming out very prominently. Occasionally we'll get a groove coming out the distal, but it's not very characteristic. Usually we'll have our major, major groove coming out on the mesial lingual. We look at our second vise, we can depict some differences in uh, our occlusal forms. Here we've got a Y form on it. Here's another Y type form. What form would we call this? This is more of our H form, straight central groove with uh, not much of a lingual groove coming out of it. So we got a central groove and uh, more of an H form on this one. Here we're picking up more of a, a U shaped one here. We've got a big U on it and again not much lingual groove coming out on it. Here's one that uh, oh, is kind of in between all of them here. It's got a very major cusp. It's got a little groove coming out here. We probably could classify that as being a Y shape, but it's not greatly critical. There'll be all types of variations in between this U, H, and Y here. It's more of an H form in here, and an H form, I guess, down on the last one here. This gives you a variation of the occlusal anatomy, and particularly the differences that occur in the outline form between these two, because I think the outline form in itself is a very strong identifying characteristic. You can pick these teeth up with their knife and round and symmetrical. Uh, they're generally seconds, and if they've got this uh, flattened, asymmetrical appearance, they're generally first without even looking to a variety of the other characteristics, which make these two teeth uh, very easy to distinguish from one another. I think it's important to uh, get some of the basic characteristics in these drawings. We, for instance, in our maxillary first premolar, we'll find several characteristics. We've got, well, let me get located here. Okay, here we are. We've got a height of contour, which is towards the cervical. On the buccal surface and on the lingual, we've got this more in the center of the tooth. We've got a rather significant difference in the height of the cusps, the buccal cusp being the largest one. We find that our mandibular tooth usually occludes in this central sulcus, 
central fossa area. And as a result, our stresses are generally right over the center of the tooth. And the central groove is usually over the root portion of this tooth. This allows our tooth to really be divided into quarters. We've got our tip of our buccal cusp, our central groove, tip of our lingual cusp, divides this tooth basically into quarters. This is similar to our second premolar. We've got the same basic height of contour, buccally and lingually. We've got a much closer relationship on our lingual cusps here. We have this tooth also divided into quarters according to cusps and grooves because the mandibular second premolar frequently will occlude basically into our central fossa area here. Now on our mandibular first premolar, our buccal cusp is usually located fairly close to being right over the center of the root. This leaves our lingual cusp rather significantly out to the lingual. So our tooth on the mandibular first frequently divides into half. We've got a half on the buccal and a half on the lingual. We've got our heights of contours a little bit higher on the buccal surface and quite high on the lingual surface. On our second mandibular premolars, this tooth usually will divide a little bit more into what I call thirds. If we were to drop a line from our buccal cusp over the root, we find that we're not in the center of the root anymore, but we're about a third of the way in. And our central groove, central sulcus area, will be about a third of the way also. Our lingual cusp is prominently located right out towards the lingual surface. So our mandibular second premolar will be divided basically into thirds occlusally, having, again, the same basic height of contours. If you were to draw these, these are the type of characteristics that we would like to be able to see on these teeth. Now, if we look to the clusal surfaces, and really the clusal surfaces are the more prominent surfaces, we should be able to identify all the teeth just from a clusal outline. And let me point out the characteristics of these premolars on outline. Basically, our maxillary are more egg-shaped or oval. Our mandibular are closer to being round. Our maxillary first are characterized by having rather strong, sharp, buccal line angles. On the maxillary second, the line angles become more rounded. On our mandibular, we find that the mesial lingual angle is usually flattened on the first. When you look at an outline form, this will have be rather flat. On the second, we are more symmetrically roundish on this. Now, if we were to fill in some of the anatomy on these teeth, according to some of the descriptions we've been telling you, we would expect on our first to find a fairly long central groove in the middle of the tooth. We expect to find a buccal cusp about one quarter of the way in and a lingual cusp about one quarter of the way, but to the mesial not located in the center, but a little bit towards the mesial. This makes our distal lingual line angle much more rounded than the mesial lingual. And looking at it in outline form, you usually can identify mesial and distal by this line angle being more rounded. You generally can tell mesial and distal on outline form of the second. The same distal lingual line angle is also more rounded. And it's a mesial lingual that's significant on the mandibular and allows you to identify that rather easily, uh, mesially and distally, or right or left. But on your mandibular, second, it's pretty difficult to determine because really the tooth is fairly symmetrical. We have line, other anatomy on this that we can rapidly sketch in for you. One is our um, grooves that would come out on this tooth. We'd have a distal buccal groove, a mesial buccal groove, and our less prominent mesial lingual and distal lingual, which gives us somewhat of an H shape to this tooth. I've got a mesial fossa, a distal fossa, and our central groove. One thing that's characteristic on this is our buccal cusp ridge, and it is straight line and tangent to, or not in a parallel to, our central groove. We can follow around our distal marginal ridge. These distal lingual cusp ridge, and this would come around to our mesial marginal ridge, and on around through the tooth. 
gives us a little bit of a peculiar shaped inner occlusal surface to this tooth. With our distal buccal groove being the longest and the strongest, the most prominent groove because of the uh, shape of our occlusal surface. Again, we will have a groove that frequently crosses our mesial marginal ridge, mesial marginal groove. On our second, we've got a fairly short central groove, leaving our marginal ridges rather heavy, but again, in the center of the tooth, we've got our buccal cusp one quarter of the way in. We've got a lingual cusp a quarter, but off towards the mesial. And our grooves on this tooth are not nearly as prominent. They're much smaller grooves. Same, our buccal cusp ridge is more commonly arced along with our distal marginal ridge and lingual cusp ridge and what have you, which makes a more oval or symmetrical nature to the occlusal surface, inner occlusal surface to this. But this is, is commonly arced over here. Now on our mandibular first premolar, our cusps basically be in the center of the tooth. Uh, one thing I didn't point out to you, which I think is characteristic, and that is we said we had two pits on this tooth. One pit that was located rather significantly to the mesial, say a mesial pit, and then the other distal pit. Now, because of the way that this mesial lingual outline form of this tooth comes through here, these pits are not equal. And usually this mesial pit will be much closer to the buccal cusp ridge, which will frequently be right down the center of the tooth here. Our lingual cusp being off towards the lingual, it gives us a rather small inner occlusal area on this tooth and makes quite a lot of difficulty operative-wise on this tooth. But these pits are not characteristically even. Then we've got our transverse ridge, characteristic to this tooth. It connects up rather prominently through here. On our second premolar, we've got our U, H, and Y. We'll just draw an H on this, but which we should identify our cusp tips first. Our cusp tip being about a third of the way in, our groove being another third of the way across through here leaving our lingual cusp more prominent to the mesial. Sometimes we'll have a, a distal lingual cusp, sometimes it will not. Sometimes it'll just be a little bump in the distal lingual marginal ridge area. From here we have rather short distal and mesial lingual grooves and the prominent grooves are those coming out to the buccal. These are the area where we've got the most surface area to the tooth. But this leaves our marginal ridges, the cusp ridges, with a, an outline form that is more to the lingual. So if you learn to sketch these teeth, you, then you start to identify where your cusps should be in relation to the mass or the bulk of the tooth, where your particular uh, grooves should be, central grooves and your pits and your fosses. And if you can get the basic ideas, like I've showed you here down, we haven't got to be an artist, but we should just... Uh, get some of these areas down. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu slash license.